Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. We welcome you to our Wednesday evening Bible study. We welcome you to Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. We're glad to be before your presence once again virtually. Amen. Giving God all the glory, honor, and praise that's due unto his name for allowing this ministry to go forth. We magnify God for all the great and wonderful things that he has done for us and through us. And uh, we're just looking forward to greater things. So we magnify God on this evening. We thank God for you tuning in to Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. Uh, and, and once again, this is Clergy Appreciation Month. And I want to go on record saying that I thank God for District Elder Robert Johnson. And I thank God for Pastor Edward Andre Morton. Amen. For all the labor of love that they have uh given to God and poured into my life. So I thank and I praise God for those two great men of God. Uh, we thank God for being here again, Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. To hear the word of the Lord. And as always, our uh, information is on the screen. So if there's uh, anything that we can do for you in the name of the Lord, uh, if you require special prayer, uh, counseling, if you want to schedule a baptism, whatever it is that you need in the name of the Lord, please uh, reach out to us and contact us. And most of all, we ask that uh, if you're in the area, Southern California, in the San Fernando Valley area, that you will meet us for our in-person services on Sunday at Monroe High School. Now, we won't have service this Sunday at Monroe, uh, but we will resume the following uh, Sunday, which is November 5th, I believe. So we are meeting most Sundays for the duration of this year at Monroe High School, amen, in the city of North Hill. So we hope to see you out. So let's go ahead and open up our Bible study tonight in prayer, amen, and then we'll go forth in the word of the Lord. Thank, once again, I thank God for you tuning in. Dear Heavenly Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, Lord, once again, we have this honor and this privilege yes. to come before you and say thank you, thank amen, you. for another day. Thank you for thank your keeping power. Thank you for life, Lord. For those that are saved, we thank you for life eternal. Lord, we thank you because you're the great God, the true and the living God. We thank you for giving us this understanding and this knowledge. Lord, as we come before you, Lord, we just thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us this day, Lord Jesus, the activity of our limbs, yes. having a sound mind, Lord Jesus, to worship you. Yes. Lord Jesus, we ask once again that you continue your manifold blessings, Lord, across this world. You know the trouble that we have, Lord Jesus, but you are still in control and you are the answer to every problem. So, Lord, we look to you tonight in prayer, Lord Jesus. We lift up our world, Lord, unto you, Lord. Remember all of the catastrophes, all the wars, Lord Jesus. Lord, bring peace on earth, Lord Jesus. Lord, let people turn their hearts and their minds unto you, Lord. Lord, we remember Jerusalem on tonight, Lord Jesus. You told us to pray for your people, Lord Jesus. Pray, Lord Jesus, for the peace of Jerusalem. So, Lord, we are praying for peace, Lord Jesus. And we know that you came on this earth in the body of Jesus Christ to die for all all mankind and anybody that would believe in you, you said that you would give them right, amen, to eternal life, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that you would save everyone that would turn their hearts and their minds unto you, Lord Jesus, because you are the only Savior, amen, and we thank you for that knowledge. Lord, save such as should be saved. Lord, we ask that you help those that are grieving on this evening uh, for the loss of loved ones. We know uh, we've heard that Dr. Wanda Davis has passed on, amen, gone into her rest, amen, eternal rest. But, Lord, we pray for her family, Lord Jesus, that you will bless them, that you will comfort them, strengthen them during this, during this difficult time of loss, Lord Jesus. Bless all that loved her, Lord Jesus. Everyone who may be grieving, bless them, we pray, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you because we know that you're soon to return. But, Lord, let, us, let our hearts and our minds be focused on you, amen, and be ready when you return. We ask that you will bless us this evening in this Bible study. Help us, Lord Jesus. Give us ear to hear what your spirit say to us individually, and we'll be careful to give your name the praise. We bless your name for all things, because all blessings come from you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord again, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our Wednesday evening Bible study. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go into the book of St. Luke.
St. Luke. Uh, so we're going to go to St. Luke chapter number 17. And we'll begin our reading at verse 11. And it's a familiar story, St. Luke chapter 17. We're going to begin reading at verse 11. And it says, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his feet, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. Wow. Okay, so we're, we're familiar with this um, story about the ten lepers being healed. Um, and so for a topic on tonight's Bible study, um, we're going to use beware of becoming unthankful. Beware of becoming unthankful. And if I were to give a subtopic, let's be ever thankful. Let's be ever thankful. Amen. All right, so here, this particular story, we see that Jesus Christ, um, he is performing his earthly ministry. And it says, as he went to Jerusalem, uh, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now, we know the story from the Old Testament, uh, when God gave uh, Moses... Um, the instructions for the priests and how they were to carry out the duties of the priesthood. But he was telling them about uh, the different diseases that people would have. And he talked about the lepers. And so the priests were supposed to be able to examine uh, the individuals to see whether or not they had leprosy or not. But uh, the lepers were supposed to be um, quarantined uh, from people because it was contagious. And so they were supposed to be separate from uh, the rest of uh, the people of Israel because of the severity of the disease and the contagious, it being contagious. And so lepers were put apart from the rest of the people. But as Jesus Christ ministered here, uh, the Bible says, as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. So they stood afar off because they knew uh, what was required of them, that they were not supposed to be in contact with people because of their disease. But it says, even though they were far off, they lifted up their voices. So even they, they weren't close to Jesus, they lifted up their voices and called him. They said, Jesus, and they said, Master, have mercy on us. And when, they, and when he saw him, them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. So he cleansed them. He healed them on their way to the priest. So they were supposed to go to the priest so the priest could examine them on whether or not, you know, they were done with the leprosy and they could come back into uh, the congregation. And it says they were cleansed as, as they went. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God. So immediately when he saw that he had been healed, rather than going to the priest like Jesus told him to show his um, gratefulness, his thankfulness, he turned around, he expressed 
his thankfulness. So to be ungrateful means not expressing gratitude. Uh, gratitude is a quality of being thankful, uh, readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. And to be thankful means to be pleased and relieved and also expressing gratitude and relief. So this person that was healed, he actually expressed his gratitude. He didn't keep on going, you know, to go to the priest, but he turned back when he noticed that God had worked a miracle, that the Lord had healed him and given him a miracle. He says he went back. He said he saw that he was healed. He turned back. And with a loud voice, glorify God. So when we're appreciative of something, we're passionate about it. And we'll do some things to let somebody know that we are grateful, that we're thankful, and that we appreciate what has been done. So this person, now just imagine any of us having leprosy or cancer or any type of disease that's life-threatening and is causing us problems. And not only that, but causing us to not be close to our loved ones and in community with people and to know that we have been healed of that and been delivered and to show our gratitude. We will be truly, truly happy. Hopefully that we would, you know, if someone told us uh, you've just been healed of cancer, we ought to praise God and thank God for what he's done. So this man that had leprosy, he can, he, the Bible says he turned around with a loud voice. So sometimes it's time to be loud. You know, there's a time to be quiet, but there's times to be loud. So this person with a loud voice, he glorified God. So when you get some good news and you're happy about something, your voice might change. But this man's voice changed. And not only that, but the Bible says he's ran. And man, he fell down. And the Bible says he, uh, with a loud voice, he glorified God. And he fell down on his face at his feet. Excuse me. Let me read it as it is in context. I don't want to add anything to it. It says, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back. And with a loud voice, glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet. So he went down at Jesus' feet. It was a posture of worshiping. Showing his humility and his gratefulness. He fell down on his face and he gave him thanks. He thanked him. He came back and he thanked him. And the Bible said he was a Samaritan. Now we know uh, the Samaritans uh, didn't have, the Jews didn't have much dealings with the Samaritans because they considered them half-breed or whatever. They didn't care for the Samaritans that much, you know. Um, but Jesus answering said, because he took note of what had just happened. He knew that there were 10 people that cried out to him. So people crying, Lord, help me, Lord, bless me, Lord, please do this for me. And he, he just showed the percentage of those that in this particular case, when they cried out for help, he helped all of them. But only, what, 10% came back? One person out of the 10 came back to say thank you. He says, Jesus answered said, were there not 10 that were cleansed? But where are the nine? So we want to make sure that we, all that hear this Bible study and all the people of God, when the Lord does something for us, that we want to make sure that we are grateful and thankful and that we show our appreciation to God, amen, for the great things that he does in our lives. He says, were there not ten that were cleansed? He said, where are the nine? So where's the greater percentage of those that are healed? Only one person came back. So we want to be aware of becoming unthankful, you know, when God does things for us. Sometimes people have a sense of entitlement and, and think, well, God is supposed to do that. He promised to do some things, here, but we're not... Um, worthy of any of his blessings. So we can't have a sense of entitlement where God has to do something for us. So we are to be appreciative of everything that he does for us. And so these, the, the greater part of these individuals did not come back and thank the Lord. Uh, he says, there are not found, they are not found that return to give Glory to God, save this stranger. So he looked at this uh, Samaritan as a stranger. So that leads me to believe that the other ones were children of Israel. Amen. God's covenant people, the children of Abraham. Amen. Because he told them to go to the priest. It was those that believed in the law of Moses that would go back to the priest. Amen. To be um, examined. And so they were most likely children of Israel, children of Abraham. Amen. His own. Amen. That didn't come back and give him Praise did not come back and give him glory and show or express their gratitude. Um, 
And so we have to make sure, you know, sometimes people have a sense of entitlement. We're the people of God and God said he would do this for us or I deserve this. We don't deserve anything. So anything the Lord does for us is a blessing unto us. And so we should be like the Samaritan, giving God glory and giving God praise and showing and expressing our thankfulness. And like this man did, he, the Bible says with a loud voice, he glorified God. Amen. And not only that, but he went even with his physical body and he put his fell down on his face at his feet because he knew that was a life threatening disease that he was going to die. But the Lord healed him. So God does great and wonderful things for us. And so we ought to show our uh, gratitude and give God the glory, give God the honor and the credit for what he's done. And so um, we don't want to become like the world. Let's turn to Second Timothy. Because we, as we're talking us, the people of God, amen, so we know the children of Israel were God's covenant people in the Old Testament, but we as Christians, born again Christians in the New Testament, we're God's covenant people, but uh, the Bible lets us know what was written in the Old Testament was written for our example, so things are written in the Bible for us to take heed and be aware of and see how we are, so if there are good examples in the Bible, we want to follow the good examples, if there are not good examples. We want to make sure we don't follow that. Amen. But we don't want to become like the world. So Second Timothy chapter 3. Let's read what it says there. Because we want to be ever grateful. Let's be ever grateful. Be ever thankful for all the great and the wonderful things that God does for us. Second Timothy 3. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. So we don't want to become like the carnal. We don't want to come become like the world. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, starting at verse 1, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And we are in the last days, in case anybody hadn't noticed. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. They shall be covetous which means, you know, selfish or greedy, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful is what I wanted to point out in this particular scripture. So while we're reading that, because it talks in the last days that people will be unthankful and unholy. So we'll stop right there. But what I wanted to pull out there, these are the last days and we don't want to take on the attitude of the world. Amen. We don't want to uh, be lovers of our own selves. We don't want to be covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. We don't want to be unthankful and we don't want to be unholy. All right. So these, this is what's happening now, but we don't want to be that. So let's go back. We, I'm going to go back to the Old Testament and we're going to talk about uh, some things that God shared with the children of Israel. We know that he promised them that he was going to take them to the promised land. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. And this, this is the second given of the law uh, as part of the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. Chapter number 8, verse 1. Let's read this. It's going to make sense when we get back to the story when Jesus Christ is, is walking the earth. It says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe and do. So God gave his people commandments to live by as a nation. Amen. And as the people of God. He says, That ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord Swear unto your fathers. And verse 2 says, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble you and to prove you and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee to know that man does not live by bread only, 
but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. He said, Thy raiment wax not old upon thee, neither did thy feet or your foot swell these forty years. Now that's a miracle within itself. The, the clothes they had on didn't wax old, and their feet didn't swell from all the journeyings in the wilderness these forty years. So God took care of them. And he said, Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, and a, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive and excuse me, a land of oil, olive and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. This is what God said He's doing for the children of Israel. He says He's taking them to a land wherein they they will eat bread without scarceness, that thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig. Verse ten is what we want to look at. He said, When thou hast eaten and are full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God. For the good land which he has given thee. So when God has blessed us, he said we are to bless the Lord. Which means we ought to be grateful, thankful, and bless the Lord our God for the good land which he has given thee. But he says, verse 11, he said, beware. And so that's what we said tonight. Beware of becoming unthankful. Amen. We have to beware of not giving God glory for the great and the wonderful things he's doing in our lives and has done. So beware of becoming unthankful. So let's ever be mindful. Okay, so here he said, beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God and not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, lest when thou hast eaten and are full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thy has has multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So sometimes when things get good for people and God is just blessing them, they forget all about God. And sometimes people it gets so bad that people think that they've done things themselves. Um, but he says, uh, let's go on down and read it because it's going to say exactly that. Uh, he says, um, verse 15, who led thee, he said, then thine heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So we can't forget who delivered us. Amen. So just like God delivered the children of Israel out of the house of bondage, he delivered us as saints of God, as Christians, uh, from the power of darkness, the bondage of sin. Amen. So we've been delivered. So he said, uh, don't forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, which brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. He says, and say in thine heart, so this is what we have to be careful of. We can't say in our heart, my power and my might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. He said, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it, it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. So it, whatever we get, God has given us power to do it. He's given us power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do it all, forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. So God was letting them know. He said, my glory will not not give to another. So God wants us to be thankful for the things that he's done. He doesn't want us to take the glory and the credit and say, well, I did this for myself and I did that for myself. But we are to thank God and be grateful for everything that God has allowed. It's him that gives us strength and the power to get wealth. Amen. So we have to remember that. So we have to beware 
of becoming unthankful. So we, whatever God blesses us with, we want to be grateful and thankful to him for it and bless his name. Give him the glory for it. Amen. Uh, let's go on down further because a few chapters down in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 32. Let's see uh, what Moses is writing here from the voice of the Lord. Thirty-two, Deuteronomy chapter 32. And it starts by saying, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, Ascribe you greatness to our God. So that's what we're supposed to do. Ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Now look what he says after that. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath brought thee, and hath he not made thee and established thee? So God is the one that establishes people, but he says, how are you requiting him? How are we paying him back? They said the people had corrupted themselves, or the people that God had blessed had corrupted themselves. And he said the spot that they're having is not the spot of his children. His children are not supposed to be like this. And they said, do you thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? So it's foolish and unwise, amen, not to give God glory and not to be thankful for the things that he has blessed us with. He said, is not he thy father that hath brought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Amen. So we want to remember. It goes on down and it says, let's go to verse 9 for the sake of time. It says, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is a lot of his inheritance. And look what he's, he told about Jacob. He's, he's given a rundown, a history about Jacob. Amen. Verse 10 says, he found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye, as an eagle stareth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, he beareth them on her wing, and beareth them on her wings. So the Lord hath, for the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. He made him to ride on the high places of the earth, talking about what God did for Israel. He made him to ride upon the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields, and he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. He goes on down and, and tells everything that he did for him. Verse 15, though, says something, but Jeshurun waxed fat, and he kicked. Thou art waxing fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. So after God blessed him, he says he got fat. He got so prosperous and so blessed that he kicked against God. Amen. And says he's grown thick and covered with fatness and he forsook the God that made him. And so we want to beware that when God blesses us, we don't want to kick a man against God. And we don't want to not esteem him and not give him the glory for the things that he's done. He went on to say that they pro provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. So then they began to serve strange gods after God, God blessed them. Uh, with abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils and not to God. So people began giving sacrifice to devils rather than God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up whom their fathers feared not. It said, of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. So that's why we have to say, beware that we don't become unmindful or that we don't become unthankful. He said, thou art become unmindful and hast forgotten God 
that formed thee. So we don't want to forget the God that formed us. We don't want to become unthankful and ungrateful and unappreciative for how God has blessed us. So that's why I say the people of God must beware of becoming unthankful. Amen. Because sometimes people don't think that they can get to that place, but it's written here in the scripture showing that it can happen, but we have to take heed and make sure that it doesn't happen. So we have to beware of becoming unthankful, which means we're going to do something to be intentional about thanking God and praising God and remembering that it Whatever we have is only because of God and we cannot have a sense of an entitlement that God is supposed to do these things for us. So if we go to Isaiah, let's go there. Isaiah chapter number 43. So God began to talk to his people Israel. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 24. And so we can get to this place, but if we're at this place, we want to repent and turn and get back to God and honor him for everything that he's allowed. Isaiah 43 and 24 says, Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices. But thou hast made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thine iniquity. So that's what God was telling his people. So they had got to the place that they were blessed, but then they went off and they were doing their own thing and not honoring God, not blessing God. Uh, but they began to sin. Some of them went into idolatry. Some of them went into fornication. So different things that people sin, but they didn't bring God an offering. They didn't bless the Lord. They wasn't blessing the house of the Lord. They didn't bring their sacrifice and their offerings as they should. Because even further down in Malachi, he said, you have robbed me. And they said, wherewith have we robbed me? He said, the whole house of Israel, you robbed me in tithes and offering. Because they had stopped bringing in their tithes and offering. But he said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. And See, well, I pour you out a blessing. You won't have room enough to receive. So the people of God had even stopped giving God his offering. You know, they were ungrateful. He blessed them, but they wouldn't give him tithes and offering. And so it must be the Lord speaking this because I had no intention. That's not in my Bible study for tonight. Amen. But we move by the Lord, the spirit of the Lord. Amen. But he said, you have taught me no, you have brought me no sweet cane with money. Neither has thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou has made to me to serve thy sins. Thou has wearied me with thine iniquities. So the Bible exhorts us. To be grateful and to be thankful. In Psalms 104, we're not going to turn there. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So we have to continue to do that. Amen. When we come into the house of the Lord or whatever place we're meeting, we're supposed to bless the name of the Lord because we're gathered together in that place to worship him. Amen. So he said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So we come in with thanksgiving. Lord, thank you for allowing me to get here. Come into his courts with praise. Praise him for the wonderful things that he's done for us. He says, be thankful unto him and bless his name. So we have to always be thankful unto God and bless his name. Psalms 107 tells us, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving. So it might seem like it's a sacrifice, you know, something you have to, but we have to sacrifice. Give him thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. So we should be happy about what God has done and declare what he's done for us. Because uh, he's doing a lot of things. If we get a sheet of paper and just start writing down everything that the Lord has done, I, I guarantee you we just keep writing and writing and writing. And we have to pray to him, Lord, you know, show me what else you've done because there's so much that sometimes we forget all the great things that he's doing but God is doing many many wonderful things for us on a daily basis and we want to be able to declare what he's doing for us and rejoice with him uh, Colossians says giving thanks unto the father which has made us meet to be partakers in the inheritance of the saint in life so we ought to be thanking God just that he brought us into the kingdom amen to be partakers of the inheritance we have an eternal inheritance we're looking to go to the you know to heaven amen and the Bible lets us know there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth we're looking to go to heaven amen and so he's made us meet to be partakers we were not able to but he's made us 
able. Amen. Through the blood that is shed. Amen. Through Jesus Christ going to the cross, he's made a way for us to have eternal life. So we ought to give thanks to the Father for that. Amen. Say, giving thanks unto the Father. So we thank the Father. Amen. Which has made us to be meat partakers of the inheritance with the saints. We were not in the with the people of God, but God grafted us in as Gentiles. Amen. And so we ought to thank God for opportunity just to be able to be saved. We didn't deserve this. So we ought to be grateful to God. We ought to be able to bow down and worship before him, thanking him for this opportunity to go to heaven, to be able to go to heaven. We ought to thank him. Say, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us. He made us. And we, and we couldn't go into heaven on our own merit. We are, Our righteousness was as filthy rags. So through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Thank God for his righteousness, not mine. I wouldn't get two feet. <laughs> Amen. Into the heavens. Amen. With my own righteousness. So thank, we have to give thanks to the Father. Amen. God, we thank you. Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Amen. Colossians tells us, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called in one body and said, and be ye thankful. So why did he have to write to the saints to be thankful? Because sometimes we can become unthankful. Sometimes we can have a bad attitude. Sometimes we cannot realize how blessed we really are. So we have to beware. Amen. Because that's a warning. Beware of becoming unthankful. Beware of becoming ungrateful because it can happen. Amen. It can happen. So uh, we have to just keep it fresh in our mind daily to be thankful. Be thankful. Amen. Uh, Thessalonians tell us, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So we go through some things down here that we're not happy with and sometimes we're disappointed. But he said, in everything give thanks. Because in Romans he tells us all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. So it's working for our good. So in everything give thanks. It may not feel like we should give thanks for it. But if we understand the mind of Christ because he's doing everything that's in our best interest, then we'll know that it's good so he said everything give thanks amen so we have to give thanks in everything amen you might not have what you want right now but thank god amen you have what you have amen because you we could not have what we have if somebody uh, as they would always say worse off than you you you're complaining and grumbling about what you want and what you you know don't have and somebody else would love to have what you have so we ought to be thankful amen he says in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he's in control. Right. Amen. And our life is hid in him. Amen. Mm. So we'll, we're going to be okay. Right. Psalm 68 and 19 says, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. So it said, Blessed be the Lord. So we have to bless the Lord because it said he daily loads us with benefits. When we woke up this morning, we had some new mercies. And God knows each and every one of us needed it because we're not living that right. <laughs> We would like to think we are, but somewhere along the line, we didn't do something right. We didn't think something right. We didn't say something right. But God gives us mercy to wake up another day. Look at that. So daily, he loads us with benefits. When we wake up, you know, if you have a mind to know that you're awoke, you're awake. That's a blessing to know, to have consciousness, to know that you're awake, to be able to get up and have the activities of your limb. That's a blessing. Amen. To be able to speak, to be able to hear, to be able to touch. Amen. Smell. All that. That's a blessing. Amen. To be able to walk. That's a blessing. Amen. He daily loads with the benefits. We wake up and if we have, you know, a roof over our head, even if it's not our roof, he's put shelter. He's given us shelter. He's given us something to eat. We got clothes on our back. Well, he daily loads with the benefits. He gives us grace, gives us favor. Amen. So he gives us a lot, so much more than what we deserve. Amen. He says, so blessed be the Lord who daily, and God is doing this every day. He's doing something for us every day. He said he daily loads us. He loads us. That means he's given us, amen, something. Amen. Loads us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. And more than that, you know, even if we a lot, but we have salvation. You know, those of us that are born again, we have salvation. We ought to bless the name of the Lord for that because uh, there was a time that we weren't saved. And, and if we had to die, we would have died in our sins. So thank God for bringing us salvation, opening up our ears and giving us understanding, drawing us with cords of love, touching our hearts, granting us repentance. Amen. That's a wonderful thing. When God grants us repentance, that's a blessing. Amen. 
So we have to thank God for that. Amen. I'm trying to get, let me get to it. But we ought to thank God. Amen. Because we could be on our way to a devil's hell tonight. We could be, you know, somewhere not in the presence of the Lord. But we ought to thank God. Amen. But we want to beware uh, of becoming unthankful. Because sometimes situations in life, uh, things that we hope for, things that we expect, if it don't come to pass or, or if it's deferred, then we become unthankful and start murmuring and complaining like the children of Israel. We don't want to do that. We don't want to be unthankful, amen, and it can happen to us. So, uh, so let's see some examples of, of people, some more examples of people thanking God. Daniel, let's go to Daniel 2, verse 23. So when God does something for us and we pray for something and God does it, he expects us to show some appreciation and some gratitude. Now we see here in Daniel 2 and 23, uh, we know the king had a dream and, and he wanted somebody to tell him what the dream and he was going to kill everybody because they weren't able to tell the dream. But Daniel and his friends, they went and they prayed, amen, and, and asked God because they didn't want to get killed just because the king had a dream and I can't tell him what it was, you know. And so, so that, but they knew what to do because they were people of God. They, they went and they prayed, amen. And so Daniel 2 and 23, it tells about Daniel being thankful because he could have been dead, right? They, they could have all been dead, you know, because the king, back in those days, they was going to make good on their word just to show their power. Say, I mean what I say, you know, so they was going to kill those wise men. Amen. And so um, Daniel 2 and 23 say, I thank thee and I praise thee, O God of my fathers. So Daniel, he, he got his answer from God. He's able to tell the, the king what his dream was and he stopped, you know, people from getting killed and he stopped himself from getting killed. Amen. He said, I thank thee and I praise thee, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou has now made known unto us the king's matter. Amen. So he was able to tell him what the dream was and give the interpretation of. Uh, so nobody's going to get killed today because God came through. Amen. So God spares our lives many different ways. So he spared Daniel's and, and the, the rest of the Hebrew boys and the rest of the king's court. He saved them from getting killed by God answering the prayer. So when God hears our prayer, we ought to thank God. Amen. Because he's doing something for us. Amen. So we want to be like Daniel and say thank you. We don't want to just say, oh, well, God, I knew God would do it and just go on like it was no big deal. We don't want to act like things are no big deal when God is doing something. He spared Daniel's life here. <laughs> Amen. Luke, um, going back to our base scripture now, uh, going back to the base scripture saying we have to be mindful of, of uh, becoming unthankful. So when we go back to Luke, and talking about those ten lepers, um, now we said that uh, chances are those were Hebrew people. Now we read in Deuteronomy what God told the people to do. And so here we see it's gotten to this place in their walk that they're not really uh, as grateful as they could be because he told them, go show yourself to the priest. And they, uh, the nine went on to the priest. They never turned back to say thank you. So people of God can get to a place of unthankfulness or a sense of entitlement where I don't have to thank God he's supposed to do this. So we don't want to be in that position where we think that God is just supposed to do something for us because God doesn't have to do anything for us. So, but we are told by the scriptures to be thankful. And so we want to be like that Samaritan, you know. So God, you know, is like, wait a minute, these are my children, Israel, but this one man that came back to give me praise is a Samaritan. He's a stranger. So we don't want the, the sinners giving God more glory and praise than we as a people, the blood washed people of God. Amen. We should have, we're supposed to be the people with understanding. We got the Holy Ghost. Amen. So how are we going to let, you know, a stranger uh, thank and praise God more than we do. So we have to be careful, people of God, about becoming unthankful or, or just think that it's supposed to happen. God is just supposed to bless me all like this and I don't have to show him any form of appreciation. Yes, we have to, we just read through the scriptures, thank and praise God because he daily loads us with benefits. God wants to see an expression of our thanks. Amen. We he wants to see us bless him back, give him glory, worship him. Amen. So we have to thank God. So uh, even Paul began to thank God. You know, so uh, we want to remember whatever God does for us, 
that encourages us, we want to thank him. We want to thank him for the word that he sends, Bible study, the message. Lord, thank you for that message because you sent it to help me. Something God is doing for us every day to guide us, to lead us, to protect us. He's doing things. He daily loads us with benefits, and he wants us to be thankful. So here... Um, in Acts chapter 28, Paul was on his way to Rome, but we know there was a great storm, Eurachlodon, and they were shipwrecked, and, and so after then, they, you know, started their journey again, continuing on to Rome, and um, verse 13 says, and because they were on their way to Rome, so 28 and 13 says, and from thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium, and after one day, the south wind blew, and we came to, came the next day to Putulio, where we found brethren, and we desired to tarry with them seven days, and so we went toward Rome. And verse 15 says, And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Apai Forum and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. So when he saw some brethren come out to meet with them, he thanked God because he was on a journey and this was a journey. It was a tedious, <laughs> tedious journey. He'd been shipwrecked and still trying to make it to Rome. But when he saw some brethren, he was encouraged. And he, the Bible said he thanked God. So, so Paul knew to thank God even for things that happened along the way because he needed uh, something to encourage him. He said, and after he met the brethren, he took courage. And so sometimes when we see brothers and sisters, we take courage and we are encouraged by that. So we thank God for being encouraged by one another. Amen? Amen. Um, 2 Corinthians um, No, no, no. Before we go there, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and, and we don't have we, 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 we will read it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57 because this is a great one. Amen. All of them are great. So we thank God for everything that he does because it has everything that he does for us has significance. Amen. It helps to build us up, helps us to perfect us in some way. Amen. Uh, verse. Uh, we're at first Corinthians chapter 15. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to read verse 57. And here. Paul is thanking God again. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. He said, but thanks be to God. Thanks be to who? Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So God is going to give us victory over this flesh, over the devil, over the, uh, the death, and over hell. Amen. The grave. Amen. God has given us victory. Amen. So thanks be to God. So we ought to thank God for that. Amen. We're not going to feel the sting of death because the sting of death is sin. Amen. But if we're born again and walking in the word of the Lord, we're not in sin. So we're not going to feel that sting of death because of Jesus Christ, what he did for us on Calvary. Amen. And when the grave cannot hold us down because the eternal life that God has given us. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost on the inside. Amen. He's given it's the new birth of water and of the spirit and because of that uh, we say thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ so we have victory over death and the grave because of what Jesus Christ did on Calvary so we ought to thank God amen we're not looking for the wrath to come amen the grave is not going to be able to hold us down when the Lord comes and calls for his people amen death we're not going to feel the sting of death amen it doesn't have victory over us because Jesus Christ has given us victory. So we ought to say like Paul, thanks be to God which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to be thankful for that. Sometimes we take it for granted. Oh, well, I'm saved. You know, well, well, I know God loves me, but well, let's show some appreciation. Love him back. Amen. Love him back and give his name praise and give him the worship that he deserves. Amen. Um. In 2 Corinthians, I'm going to read the Amplified Bible, but before I do that, um, let's turn there. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. So we, again, as the people of God, we have to beware of becoming unthankful because those nine lepers... They should have known to give God glory because they had the writings. Amen. He, they had the Pentateuch. 
they had, you know, they, you know, they had, some of them were acquainted with the Psalms, you know, uh, but they knew they were supposed to bless God and to thank him, even from the book of Deuteronomy. But by the time Jesus Christ came and walked the earth uh, and he actually healed them, they failed to give him glory. They failed to show their appreciation and their thankfulness. And so we don't want to get to that place and that mindset where we're like those people and like what God has already told us the uh, last days would be like. He said, perilous times shall come. Amen. We don't want to get the mindset of the world. We want to always be thankful to God and show our appreciation by our worship and our service to him. Um, so second, what did I say? Second Corinthians 9 and 15. So here Paul is writing to the Corinthians, but he said, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Amen. So we ought to thank God for his unspeakable gift. So let's run. We're going to read and see what was going on there for Paul to say that. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version, though. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, Second Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 1. But this is the Amplified Version because it reads a little easier. And it said, Now it is necessary for me to write to you about the offering that is to be made for the saints in Jerusalem. For I know your eagerness to promote this cause, and I have proudly boasted to the people of Macedonia about it, telling them that Ikea has been prepared since last year for this contribution. And your enthusiasm is inspired or has inspired the majority of them to respond. He says, still, I'm sending the brothers on to you so that our pride in you may not be an empty boast in this case. And so that ye may be prepared, just as I told them you would be. Otherwise, if any Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, to say nothing of yourselves, will be humiliated for being so confident. That is why I thought it necessary to urge these brothers to go to you before I come and make arrangements in advance for this generous previously promised gift of yours so that it would be ready not as something extorted or wrung out of you but as a voluntary and generous gift he said now remember this he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and he who sows generously that blessings may come to others will also reap generously and be blessed he said let each one of you thoughtfully and with purpose just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. But he goes on to say this next statement. And God is able to make all grace, which means every favor and earthly blessing, come in abundance to you so that ye may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him, and have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. As it is written, as it is written and forever remains written, he, the benevolent and generous person, scattered abroad, he gave to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. And he goes on down to verse 14, and it says, uh, and they also long for you while they pray on your behalf because of the surpassing measure of God's grace, his undeserved favor, mercy, and blessing, which is revealed in you. Now thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, which is precious beyond words. So we thank God for his indescribable gift. And that means that grace, amen, grace, the, his undeserved favor, mercy, and blessing, amen, so God has made, he told those that were given in Corinthians, he said, because of your giving, uh, you're given cheerfully, and you're given, amen, not sparingly, he said, God is able to make all grace abound to you in everything, so when we give to the Lord, God is able to make all grace abound to us, he'd open up doors everywhere, so that we have everything we need, amen, when we give to him and give to his causes, amen, so he says, God's his grace, he said, now thanks be unto God for his indescribable gift, and nobody can explain that 
totally but God. Amen. You give, amen, but God gives everything back to you that you actually need. So nobody can beat God giving. So when God asks for us to be generous, he says be just that because you're not going to lack anything. He even told the rich man, he said, sell everything you have and come and follow me. And he sold everything he had. He was telling that rich man, I'm going to take care of you. So God is going to take care of us and make sure every need is met. Amen. So God just wants us to thank him for his grace, amen, his unmerited favor, amen, But because he, he's able to open up doors, he's able to open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings where we don't have room enough to receive, amen. And the last scripture that we're going to go in to talking about Thanksgiving, uh, let's go to First uh, Timothy, amen, 1st Timothy, Amen. Thank God for his undescribable gift. Thank God for his grace. Amen. It's nothing like the grace of God. Undeserved favor, mercy, and blessings. Amen. My God, my God, my God. Just thinking of that. <laughs> God say, you just do what I tell you to do. You don't know what kind of doors are open up unto you. Because <laughs> it all belongs to me. He says, my my undeserved favor, mercy, and blessings. He said, he says, you know, God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing. God is able to give you favor with all kind of people to get everything that we need because it's all his, right? He can touch people's heart. Okay, my servant needs that. Go over there. That person is going to give it to you. God has given you favor. Amen. So thank God for his favor. Somebody say favor is not fair. Thank God for his favor. Okay, the last scripture, 1 Timothy chapter number 1, verse 12. And it says, now this is Paul writing to Timothy, and it says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. So he thanked Christ Jesus our Lord. He said, Who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So he said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord for enabling him, and counting him faithful and putting him in the ministry. So he's thanking God for his calling and his purpose and for God enabling him or equipping him to do what he's called him to do. So we ought to thank God for whatever purpose and calling he has on our life. And not only that, that he enables us to carry out his purpose and his will. So we ought to thank God for what he's doing in our life. We ought to give ourselves unto him so that he can do what it is he wants to do in our life. So we are to yield ourselves to him as servants. Lord, what do you have me to do? Amen. So Paul says he thanked God. He said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me. So he, he realized he was enabled by Christ. Amen. For that he counted me faithful. So God puts call on people's life. He know what people are able to do. Amen. He said, putting me into the ministry. So thanking God for the call on his life. Amen. So we're grateful for God's call on our life. We're grateful for what God is doing. And we want to show our gratefulness. We want to show our thankfulness just like that leper that was healed, that Samaritan leper that was healed, we want to cry out with a loud voice, Lord, I thank you. You've done something wonderful in my life. You've done something great for me. And I appreciate that because I couldn't have done it on my own. Uh, no matter if it, I went to school and I got a, a degree or whatever, I still couldn't have done it on my own. It, has, it takes God to give you the intellect. And God gives us the strength. So everything that we have, it comes from God. Amen. And so let's give God the glory for everything that he's done for us. Let us not become unthankful for the wonderful things that he's doing. Let's not take any glory upon ourselves because we can't do anything without God. He said, except you abide in the vine, you can do nothing. You can't do anything without me. So we cannot do anything without God's life, health, and strength, and without his giving us the ability to do Whatever it is that we do. So all glory goes to God. So we don't want to be like those nine that didn't come back and say thank you. But for everything that God does for us, we want to say thank you, Lord, and we appreciate you. Uh, amen. And we want to be in right standing with the Lord. So that's our Bible study on tonight. The people of God must beware of becoming unthankful. We don't want to be like those carnal people of the last days, unsaved, the worldly people that are heady, high-minded, boasters, covetous and unthankful. We don't want to be in that crowd. We don't want to be in the unthankful crowd, but we want to always give God thank 
And we want to always give him glory. So the people of God must beware of becoming unthankful and ungrateful. So let us ever, always, ever be thankful. Amen. Not having a sense of entitlement because God doesn't owe us anything and he gives us all things to enjoy. That's the Bible study on tonight. If you need special prayer, if you want to schedule a baptism, if you want to become a member of Liberty Pentecostal Church, uh, please give us a call or send us an email and we'll get back in contact with you. God's blessings upon you is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.